lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim. share with you what the Just For You podcast is all about, that you may have an understanding of what God is doing. Hallelujah. We're excited about the goodness of Jesus. The Just For You podcast is designed to encourage, empower, and engage listeners to thrive spiritually and naturally, utilizing biblical principles. Just For You will reveal truth embedded in the Holy Bible to illustrate kingdom living, soul winning, compassion, and strategies to serve mankind, making a difference locally and globally. 
Just for you, we'll allow listeners to hear teachings that are applicable, guests that will inspire, and opportunities for serving more effectively in the home, church, school, community, and marketplace. That is what Just For You is all about. I don't know about you, but this past week, we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a time in the Lord. I know it was different for most of us across the globe because for the first time that I can ever remember, there was no church services. Everything was closed. Online there were, but not physically where we could go into a church to worship the Lord. But listen, I truly believe that the Lord is preparing us for his coming, and his coming requires us to have this relationship with him. What does that mean? That means building or no building, can we still acknowledge and appreciate our Lord and Savior that died on the cross for us and rose on the third day as he said he would, he would do it. And guess what he did? On Good Friday, as he went through all that he went through for each and every one of us, I want you to put in your mind, we all say, we love you, Lord. We appreciate you. We're grateful for you in our lives. But can we really be honest with something he did that was so unbelievable that we know in our human flesh most of us could never do. Let's go back to Good Friday. On Good Friday, he made a decision. It was prophesied. It is already written that the Messiah would be coming, but more so, it was prophesied about his crucifixion. Listen, he knew he had to die for me and for you. He didn't Open his mouth on the cross. But guess what? For all of you to say, oh, someone talks about me. Or, oh, you know what? I don't like the way this feels. Or, you know what? I am sick of this. And blah, 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 blah. I need you to know. He took the pain. He took the stripes on his back. He took all of the scorning, the vinegar, the crown on his head, blood dripping in his face, pierced in his side, all the things he accepted and did just for me and you. I cannot thank him enough for loving us so much besides our mindsets, our sinful ways, our thought processes that he would still carry this heavy cross and think of you and me. I need you to understand he is God. He is God. And he came in the flesh to love on, accept all of our burdens, all of our cares, all of the things that we know that we know we had to go through. He accepted it for you and for me. Always know how valuable and how loved you are. There was a lot he took to let us know. Being nailed. Can you imagine something going in your wrist, in your feet, being poked in your side and being having this crown on your head just to say you love, to say that your royalty, your majesty is not compromised by anybody. How many of you would run in a line to do that for mankind? How many? So when we get to resurrection morning, that is the time we celebrate All that he did. I even said something last week, and I'll say it again, and forgive me if it doesn't fit into your vernacular, but I said that he was even thug enough, he was strong enough, bold enough to take the keys of life and death from the enemy that we would have life eternal. Listen, this is a part of your inheritance with him, to come to know him in the 
suffering, not just in your blessings, not just when you get something, not just when you have what you want. What do we do when we're going through, and what do we do when it seems like there's no end? Look at the coronavirus. Look at COVID-19. It started. Of course, we may have thought, okay, yes, this is going to pass. Here it is. Months later, we're still dealing with something that seems like it's not going away. But I am here to tell you, the Lord has an expiration date for anything and everything that will not bring him glory. But this thing here has been designed to align Christians with the perfect will of God, even when it seems like everything is chaotic and out of whack. So today... I thought it would be befitting to talk about the life of an overcomer. So here we have Jesus who died. He, on Good Friday, was scorned. Can you imagine them calling him names? (laughs) You're the king of glory. (laughs) If you can, save yourself. Get off of the cross. Do what you do because you are all that and a bag of chips. Oh, you know people talk trash. You know they say things that will make you upset and they do things to push you and they were laughing at him. And can you imagine them throwing fabric at him? <laughs> well, here's your role. And I tell you what, if you're so majestic, we're going to see what's going to happen when we do this. But guess what he did? With all of the mocking, with all of the scorning, with all of the pain, listen, he still said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's a message for someone today, because there has to be a place where forgiveness is given. When somebody has come to slay, when somebody has come to destroy, when someone has come to hurt, maim, or destroy you, you have to know within your heart, he said, Father, imagine the picture. You spit on me. You gave me vinegar to drink. You put the crown on my head. You did all of these things to Jesus. This is what Jesus would say. You did this to me. And I still say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. What a powerful Savior we have. So on today, I know we've had a lot of things that have been expressed as far as telling us how many times a day, because I refuse to watch it all day, every day, I want to be informed, but I don't want to be exhausted with what the world has said. When I know the truth that the overcomer reigns, I know that those of us that are connected to the Lord Jesus Christ, with all that they are going through, have already understood we have victory, total victory in this thing. And listen, we know there have been loved ones that may have gone on to be with the Lord, and someone may have questioned, well, if we are saved, then how can this be, and why are we suffering, and why? Because the Lord has promised Whether we are on this side or the other side, he has given us total victory. He has given us total healing in our bodies. And we have to understand it may not always be the outcome we want. So in the life of an overcomer, we're going to examine some scripture here today to go through some things that we can write down, some things that you can look at and know that in these times and days ahead that you are victorious. To be an overcomer, you have to first go through something. Come on, somebody. Everybody wants to live a victorious life without a problem. Never saw it, never heard of it. Listen, in order to press through, in order to go through, we have to know there's going to be a trial and a tribulation. We have to know that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that's raised against us thou shalt condemn, condemn, for this is the heritage of the saints, and this is what was spoken to us by the Lord of hosts. Come on, you need to know in Isaiah 
54, 17, that word is for the believer. It's not just for when people make you mad. It's because I walk in victory every day. I put on my victory clothes. I stand before the king covered in the blood of Jesus, recognizing he's after me just because I woke up this morning. But I decree and declare I am his child. You are his child. We shall have what we say, and we must say what's in the word. So come on, let's examine what's in the word for us to state we are in the life of being overcomers. In First John 5 and 4, it reads this. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Now, many of you know we talked about faith, and we continually talk about faith because you can't please God without it. That assurance, that understanding that knows that he is going to come through. Why? Because we are going to face challenges. I'm not fooling anybody. I'm not going to tell you you're going to come into the body of Christ, you're going to receive victory, and you're not going to go through anything. You're going to have the life of Riley. You get to lay back and not worry about a bill. You don't have to worry about a child acting up. You don't have to worry about a marriage or finances or anything that will cause you uh, a place in your life to be upset. I want to let you know it's coming. If it hasn't already hit you, it's coming. And when it does, we need something more than just to say, Lord, help me. We need to begin to pray the word. Here's another scripture. It is John 16 and 33. It reads as such, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Come on now. That means we have victory. Let's keep going through the scriptures. James 1 and 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. That's that answer for those that have gone on to be with the Lord, whether it's been from the coronavirus or whether it's been from another illness or at the hand of murder that someone has taken their life. There it is for you in black and white. Let me read it again. It says, Blessed, James 1 and 12, blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised him, mm, promised to them that love him. Romans 8 and 37 says this, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. What are these things? Family troubles, government troubles, financial troubles, ministry troubles, all the troubles that you can think of. He has said you are more than a conqueror through him that loved you. First John 5 and 5. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Here's another thing we've got to go back. Let's back it up to Romans 10, 9, and 10. In order to be in relationship with him, you have to accept him in your heart. You have to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. You can't just say, oh, he know my heart, or yes, I believe, but nobody knows you believe because you don't mention his name outside of your safe dwelling called a church. I believe that the reason a lot of churches have also closed down is because in the confession part, those that do confess, this does not apply. But for those that have not confessed, God said, I'm going to give you an opportunity that if you never gave me your glory, you never gave 
made me glory before. I want to see what you're saying right about now. When you at home where don't nobody see you, I wonder the kind of conversations we have about a Savior who died in the matter that he died so that we can have eternal life, so that he could rise on the third day and give us the joy, the peace, the understanding that we are well, regardless of what we see. What are we saying today? Are we talking about the coronavirus 24 hours a day? Are we trying to live in fear everywhere we go? Caution and fear are two different things. You can be cautious, but you don't have to be fearful. So we need to understand for all that he did for us, how much more are we to do for him? How much more are we to glorify him? How much more is our words, our testimonies to match what the world just can't believe and see? See, it takes a blood believer to be able to say in the midst of all of the chaos going on, God is good. Oh, I know it sounds crazy. God is wonderful. He is amazing. He does exist. Exceedingly abundantly above all we could think or ask. Here's the other part. According to the power that worketh in us. How do you know you have power? How do you know that you are walking in the favor, the grace of God? Because our testimony is not the same. The way we view things are not the same. The way we examine life is not the same. It's like the glass. Some people feel it's half empty. Majority of optimistic people are going to say it is full, half full. It's what we say that gets the heart of God. I need somebody to catch that. First John 4 and 4, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Let's read that one again. First John 4 and 4, ye are are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Can I say this? A lot of people, when they turn 18, you will hear them say, I'm grown now. But I've never seen a grown child when it's referring to God. When we become so grown in the aspect of not being respectful, we have then changed the analogy of the father-child relationship. Listen, I don't care if I'm 70 and the Lord God is my father, I am still his child. There is a measure of respect that goes with that. It isn't that I can tell him what to do. I need somebody to catch that. It isn't that I'm going to tell him how this world should be run because I don't like the coronavirus. I don't like what I'm seeing. Loved ones are dying. Things just are not adding up. But God in his infinite wisdom and love is still being gracious, still being merciful, still being kind, working behind the scenes to give us total victory, whether we believe it or not. I know those that have gotten those stimulus checks, you believe that's really good. You believe God has really blessed you, but you don't understand. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns everything we can ever imagine. Being connected to him is a right to the inheritance that he has. And when we're in relationship, Here's the key. With him, he bestows and drops upon us as he will, when he wills for it to be done. That means it may not come when the stimulus checks come, but you better believe if it comes after it is well worth it because he wants his glory. Not only that, he wants us 
to tell someone about how good he is. Let's continue to read. Revelations 3 and 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. Isn't that good news? We get to sit with He's going to grant it to you. My, my, my. First John 5, 4, and 5. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that we read that said it even overcame our faith. Hallelujah. But it says, who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Come on. You got to believe in your heart and confess it with your mouth. Revelations 3 and 5, he that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angel. Come on, Jesus is going to himself say about your name. Come on. How beautiful and blessed. Don't you want him? Last week we learned that he testified of the gifts of those that were serving when it came to Cain and Abel. Even after they were gone, he yet speaketh. The the testimony yet speaketh from the grave. Isaiah 55, 8 through 13. Let's read that. Hallelujah. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, it's not going back up, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not Return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. For ye shall go out, ah, here we go, with joy, and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up from the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Did you hear that his word will accomplish that which he sent it to accomplish? Know his word. Know it is true. He will not lie to us. It is according to his word, be it unto us. John 8 and 32. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Luke ten nineteen. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means hurts you. Ephesians 6 and 11. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, my Lord. Revelations 2 and 17, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saveth, saving he that receiveth. Revelations 12 and 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their 
testimony, and they love not their lives unto death. What are we saying? What are we believing? How are we living? What do we want God to know in this whole situation of the coronavirus? What have we said to make his name great, to call upon his name in the time of trouble and know that he is a very present help? Whose report will you believe? Isaiah 53 and 1 says, who has believed our report? And whom and to whom and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Who? Who knows what you believe concerning your God? Who knows how powerful and majestic he is? What are we saying? Are we living the life? of an overcomer, we're going to go through. We're going to feel pain. We're going to accept some things that we don't want to accept. But he made us a promise that he will be with us always, even until the end of the world. There are a lot of things coming our way that we are not going to like, that the government is going to try. And the believer has to stand bold and firm and admit that he is our God and that greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world. There are going to be many, many things that disappoint us in this life. But the life of an overcomer says, no matter what I go through, no matter how I go through, our God reigns. I will say it over and over and over and over. Our God reigns. He reigns supreme. He reigns great. He reigns above all of our troubles, trials, our tears. He bottles. He loves us so much that he bottles every one of our tears. Do you know how many angels are around you when you accept that you are a child of God? When you don't know what to pray and how to pray, that the Holy Spirit will bring things to your remembrance. And listen, when we pray and don't know what the prayer is that we are to pray at the moment we are to pray it, do you not know that the Holy Spirit begins to give intercession on our behalf, that Jesus himself will intercede on your behalf? Aren't you precious and powerful before the Lord? Don't you have authority in his word? How much does he trust you? How much does he want you to know he loves you and he cares? Omega, the beginning and the ending. Lord, I need your help right now. We need you, God. You are everything we need and more. Let's read James 5. I hope you've written these down, and if not, you'll get a chance to hear it on the replay. Please know we are overcomers in this season. James 5, 7 through 20. Be patient, therefore, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband and walk and wait for the blessed feet of the Lord and of the earth. Let me go back. Be patient, therefore, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband waited for the precious fruit of the earth and have long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets, 
who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven nor by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be your yea and your nay be your nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. Is there any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is there any merry? Let him sing songs. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with all in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. The Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sin. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. We do not have the mind of God. We have his word. We have what he has spoken to inspired men that wrote the gospel. When things don't line up to our thinking, he told us in Isaiah 55, his ways are not like our ways. His thoughts are not like our thoughts. I want you to be encouraged on this week. I want you to be encouraged when it comes to the things of God. He is not against us. He is for us. He is calling for those that know him to come after days and say. Our premier assignment is his first love, making sure the gospel is heard, making sure those that don't know him will come in contact with him. So let's be mindful of what we're saying when we're in the public and when we're at home and when we're with our neighbors. Let's not give the enemy any credit. He has none. Our God reigns. God is good. I don't care what's going on. My testimony will be he is good. Our God reigns. He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. I will not talk about how bad coronavirus is. I will not tell people, oh, we all going to die this. We might as well get ready. The devil is a lie. No, we will stand on the word of God. We will encourage those that don't know him. Yes, things may be going on. We're not going to lie to them. We're going to say, yes, There might be some casualties, if you will, but our God reigns. He loves us, and he loves the believer. Don't you think for one minute he doesn't love someone that has gone on to be with the Lord, whether it's by corona or something else. He loves his children. He takes care of us, whether we're living or whether he's calling us to be with him. He is God, and he knows exactly what to do and how to do. My grandma used to say, you just got to wait on her. My mama 
to say. You just got to wait on him. Listen, when you get to know him, everything ain't going to work out on the day you want it to work out on, the hour you want it to work out on, the day, the hour, the moment, the second. He is God. If he sit there and it seems like it's been four years and things ain't moved along, listen, when he say it's over, it's over. When he says this stops, it stops. I just know I want to praise him in the process. I don't want to wait until it's over to act like I'm a Christian, to act like I'm going to say, oh, God is good. No, no, no. I want to say right now, I want to let the world know right now, he is God. He is good. He is marvelous, and I won't take it back. He is our Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He is Jehovah Shalom, my peace of mind. He is Jehovah Nisi, my banner. I know who he is. I've watched him work over and over and over again in my life. I've seen the hand of God move in the midst of chaos. And when he gets through with it, you can't say nothing but that was the hand of God. Did you see what God did? Oh, come on. Somebody remember 9-11? The world thought it was going to fall in. We thought it was the worst thing that ever happened. Sure, it was bad. Sure, there was things. But you know what 9-11 did? 9-11 caused the saints to pray. It caused the unbeliever to believe. Some people are still saved today because of 9-11. We've got to see some things in a different light. There are things in tragedies that happen that are not for the bad. The Bible says all things work together for good to those who love God and are the called according to his, according to his, according to his purpose, not you and mine. He has something greater coming out of this. There are some folks that mothers and fathers have been praying for, grandmamas been praying for, that's getting a little closer to God about right now. There are some people that said, I ain't going to never serve God, but they run into him about right now. There's somebody that found what mercy and grace truly was about right now. Somebody said they wasn't giving me no hours at work. Now they're working overtime. Y'all better hear me today. He is God. He knows what to do and how to do it. I even heard Dorinda Clark say that on this past weekend for their movie, God allowed this to be at a time when their movie dropped, that 2.7 million people could learn about the goodness of Jesus and learn about their lives. Listen, when God sets a stage and a platform, it doesn't matter if you like it. What we better understand and know is to get our hearts and minds prepared for what's coming. He's coming back. When they said on the third day he'd rise again, many people probably laughed. <laughs> you know, they've been saying this. Y'all better listen. Oh, no, nah, that's not going to happen. You know, and they said, can you imagine when the report got out that they went to the tomb and he was not there? Can you imagine what the world must have been like at that time? Question. Do you believe he's coming back? Telling you like he told them. He's coming back. And he's coming back for a church without a spot. Or he getting us all together. If I can be real about it, I ask the Lord, take anything out of my heart, mind, spirit, soul that's not like you. Even things I may not even think is an issue, but if it displeases you, work on me. You know, there was a song that said, work on my mind. Y'all better come on. If you really want to see him again, that's what the church should be doing just right now. Don't miss this opportunity to get it right. Don't miss this opportunity to allow him to be glorified. If you haven't been telling the world how wonderful and good he is, 
and you haven't been in your prayer closet praying, here's your opportunity. You can change it. You can get yourself in alignment by the power of God, where you can pour out all of your issues on him. And guess what? He's going to hear you, and he's going to love on you, and he's going to help you where you are. If you don't know the Lord in the power and the pardon of your sins, Please don't let these opportunities go back when you hear any man or woman of God inviting you to the throne. Don't think I've got more time because some people just don't have it. Be ready when he comes. And by all means, be appreciative of who he is. I want to see Donald Trump, our president, say. So I'm not going to talk about how bad of a president he is. He ain't did nothing for us. He, no, 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 no. That's out of order. What I'm going to say is God saves. God changes mind. God changes talk. God fixes his heart because I want to see him do it. You got to be careful what you're releasing out of your mouth into the atmosphere. We may not all agree on everything, but there's something that we just have to be careful because there are unbelievers listening. And we've got to make sure that we're emulating the body of Christ the way it needs to be emulated. And we will mess up and we will have issues and problems like the rest of it. We're in this human flesh. The Bible says there's no good thing in the flesh. But if you will remember and keep yourself in reminder of your power, of his power that he's given you, you're going to see his hand move. So if you will today, take these scriptures, keep them on the tablets of your heart, that when the enemy comes and he tries to remind you how bad this world is, you can tell him he's a lying wonder. Our God is good. Our God reigns. He is Alpha and we can begin to sing the same language. We can begin to say the same words because it's all in the word of God. Let's give him a black eye by banding together and saying what he needs to hear, that the world needs to hear. They need to hear our God is great. I pray these scriptures have encouraged you that you have more power this week, more authority over the enemy, no matter what is brought your way. I pray that God will give you a peace that you knew not of, a joy that only you can experience through him and his word, and allow the negativity to go away. And this is how you get rid of it. When someone comes to be negative with you, just keep telling them how good God is. I've heard people telling me about books. I've heard people telling me about various things. You know what I say when they don't say nothing about God? I say, oh, but the Bible said. They might get a little irritated, at it, and I will say it every time I hear it. But the Bible said, because I live by it. If we're going to be connected to him, we got to live by that word. We can't condition ourselves to be just like the world and then want to give a word. That ain't going to work. You have to give the words and speak what God says because he is God. So thank you on today's podcast. I do want to share a few things with you. I want to celebrate and congratulate. If you have a birthday this month, we want to say happy birthday. We say happy birthday to Christine Adams, who celebrated her birthday on this week. Um, If you have a birthday in the month of April, we celebrate you. We want you to know you are loved with Elation Radio and Magazine and with the Just For You uh, podcast, we are praying for you. If you've celebrated with getting an opportunity to have advancement on a job, a baby, something wonderful has happened for you in your life. We love you and we're praying for you on today. Listen, 
There are many that have gone through some illness or some sickness. We want you to know sincerely, anybody that really knows us here, we are praying for you. We are lifting you before the Lord. We are lifting up Lamanda Bethany and Jeff King. Lord, we know you know all about it. Take over and show yourself supreme in their lives and bless their families as they're going through these trials and tribulation. We want to lift up in the name of Jesus. We want to lift up our own sister, Rosemary Brits, hallelujah, our sister, Kimmy Robinson and family. We want to lift up all that are going through in some manner or way, or there's been a Death in the family, we are praying for you. We still yet congratulate nominations. May have had to wait a little bit on the upcoming uh, shows and upcoming events, but we still congratulate our brother, David Benson, and our sister, Shay Samuels. Listen, we're going to pray. I want you to be in agreement with me. We are praying for all that are in fear, all that have been afflicted, all that are broken, all that are unsaved. We want to pray for every pastor in every ministry. We want to pray for Israel, God's chosen people. We want to pray for our president, Donald Trump, and our government, every doctor and nurse and healthcare worker, all families, businesses. We want to pray that God will look upon Reverend Michael Wallace and his family, the Andrews family, Antoine Hodges, Brian Owens and family. And please, by all means, lift up all the requests that you have in your heart because he truly hears and will answer. Please, when you pray, don't forget about me and my husband. This Donald Wright. We appreciate the prayers, and there are things that happen when we come together, two and three, gathered in the name of the Lord. May we pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you thanking you for the goodness and the mercy that you bestowed upon us all. We woke up this morning. You started us on our way. We're right here in the smack dab middle of this podcast, and you're still with us. You're still leading us, guiding us, and protecting us, and we say thank you. We say thank you for every trial, oh God, not just our blessings, because in our trials, we find you show up, we find you step in, and we find that you make a way out of no way. You give us courage when we're fearful. You give us strength when we have no strength. When we are weak, you said our, your grace is sufficient, and we want to say thank you for grace on today. Thank you for healing the hearts of pastors across the globe, God, that are praying and crying out to you, churches that are crying out to you. Lord, we say thank you today. Thank you for Israel. Thank you for a praying people in a praying wall. We say thank you today, oh God. We thank you and bless you, oh God, for your love that surpasses all human understanding, your love that gets us in the place where we feel we're unlovable, but you yet keep forgiving. You yet keep giving us hope in the midst of our sorrow. Lord, we say thank you, God. Would you look upon all that are going through a death in the family? God, would you wrap your arms around them? Would you hold them close to you? Would you remind them that you love them as the tears fall? You love them even more, God, because you love us all. God, I thank you right now for all parents. God, crying out for their children. Would you hear the prayers today, oh God? Lord, we pray for the seniors, whether they're in the senior facilities or at home. Keep your angels encamped around them, God. Make sure they get everything they need.
need, oh God, when they can't walk, when they can't talk, when they don't know what to do, oh God. Hallelujah. Send somebody, God, and we will say thank you forevermore. We remember the homeless on today. Would you make sure, God, they're well taken care of, whether they choose to be homeless or homeless by some event that caused them to be that way. Be with them, God. Lead them, guide them, and direct them. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus for all of the nurses and the doctors and healthcare workers, those cleaning rooms as much as the doctors, God. Keep them safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. Let them know you are with them and you will not fail them. Let them know, ah, yes, God, you love them with an everlasting love. And Lord, when disease and chaos is all around, Would you just speak peace? Be still at your given moment, God. Would you let the world know how powerful it is and the power you gave the believers that pray on one accord, God. We pray for those entering into the body of Christ even now as we pray. They're hearing your voice, God. They're answering yes, God. Would you bless them? Would you keep them near to you? Would you send people around them, God, that they don't get off track? Maybe a phone call or maybe an online communication. Whatever way you see fit, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for marriages across the land, oh God. Thank you, oh God, for loving us all so much, oh God. Thank you, God, that you haven't forgotten one prayer request. So for that one that thinks, I may not have been heard, God, on today. Would you just tap on them? Would you just send them something to let them know you heard them? And, God, would you draw your people even the more closer to you, that we not be confused in a time like now, but that we stand affirmed and affixed, that we know who you are and what you promised us. And then, Lord, we ask that you forgive us. Forgive us all of our sins, and we forgive others that we may be forgiven. Help us. We need your help, oh God. We can't make it without you. There's no man, woman, boy, or girl that can make it in this life without you. So we're calling upon you. We're asking you to come in and help, help in every area of our lives. And we will give you the glory, the honor, the praise. Do your name. You alone are worthy of all of the praise. And we just want to say thank you. We want to say we love you. We want to say we appreciate you. Thank you, hallelujah, for dying on the cross for all of us, oh God. Thank you for taking the stripes on your back and the pain and the crown and all the things that we didn't have to go through so that we can reign with you one day. Never let us forget it, God. Never let us forget any moment of it so that we can enjoy knowing not only the sacrifice, but the power you had when you got up. So, Lord, lead us, guide us, and direct us. Forgive us all of our sins, and we will forgive others. Give us a heart to forgive. Help us to be like you when Jesus was on the cross, and he said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And, Lord, we'll be forever grateful. We'll be forever appreciative, because if it were not for grace, there goes I. Do we know how many saws of Tarsus there really are now? God, that are walking around persecuting the believers. But we take you at your word. Have your divine will and way. And we will thank you forevermore. And we love you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, listen, I thank you again for sharing and for being here at the Just For You podcast. Please, please continue to listen us all up. We want to say a special thank you to our own Kimmy Robinson, even in the midst of all that she's going through, to still be on the battlefield, still serving in the midst 
We say thank you. We don't take it for granted. We love you and appreciate you. We say, Lord, we thank you for all of the listeners. Would you bless them in a special way for every time they get on or whenever they listen to a replay? God, just bless them. And then, God, just continue to keep your hand upon all of us. And we will give you all the honor, all the praise, and all of the glory. Well, listen, if you want to get in contact with me, you can reach me on Facebook, Michelle, M-I-C-H-E-L-E, right, at Facebook and at LinkedIn. Please shoot me over your prayer request. I intercede in early mornings, and I'll be glad to take those prayer requests before the Lord and agree with you for God to bless and to deliver Until next time, we say continue to pray for us. We love you, and we look forward to another time in the Lord at the Just For You podcast with Minister Michelle Wright. May God bless you. Until next time. Glory to your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Trying to put the hoses to my fire They don't understand why I be praising my messiah Sounding like a church in my car with no choir The windows roll down, turn it up a little higher When I'm in the spirit, I be feeling transformed Want me turn it down, saying no to lukewarm God say do it, better do it, been warned Baptize my renewed, feeling reborn I know there's a lot that don't like how I do things They be trying to take me down, trying new things They don't understand I got protection from the true king There's a cross on my back that I must clean Send a praise to the heaven like it's fireworks Everybody want the chorus how the body works Sunday night praising God till the body hurts Giving honor to the Father for his mighty works If you're looking for a reason I can give you one Think about a battle that you shouldn't have won If you woke up in the morning there's another one If I was you I would give praise to the holy one God gave me joy so the world can't take it Riding on the boat sending away trying to shake it Aiming for my faith on the daily trying to break it Real fruits from the vine can't fake it Cruising in the wheel, feeling alright. Turning up a worship at the red light. Getting lost in my praise, but I'm too high. The lights turn green, now they honking, they'll be alright. Cruising in the wheel, feeling alright. Turning up a worship at the red light. Getting lost in my praise, but I'm too high. The lights turn green, now they honking, they'll be alright. I just do what's required, this ain't my ways Wait a minute, why they looking at me sideways? All the shade rolling in like a tidal wave I just learned to turn it up on them highways Going through, praise God, you forget to hurt Praising God where the seeds that be in the dirt Got my worship on high on the way to work Ayy, swerving in my challenger, skirt, skirt Gotta even learn to do it in the bad times Broken heart even in the sad times He can change the game around before it's even half time Put the enemy to sleep before it's nap time The God I praise hold all the power FP and L ain't got nothing on this tower He can bring them lights any minute, any hour He the one that turn your seed, homie, to a flower Thank God for the tents when them windows up I be crying like a baby for a sippy cup Tears rolling down my face, begging God to lift me up Had a bad day, that's a good pick me up Thank God for the tents when the windows up I be crying like a baby for a sippy cup because, hey, tears rolling down my face, begging God to lift me up. Had a bad day, boy, that's a good pick me up. Cruising in the wheel, feeling alright. Turning up my worship at the red light. Getting lost in my praise, but I'm too high. The light turn green, now they honking, they'll be alright. Cruising in the wheel, feeling alright. Turning up my worship at the red light. Getting lost in my praise, but I'm too high. The light turn green, now they honking, they'll be alright. 